Happy Thursday, listeners. Welcome to Roast Mortem. My name is Tom. Oh, I'm Thursday Thirsty Travis. Yeah, I am your Cody for this Thursday evening. And I'm Mike. Hey! Oh, God, Mike. We're all here. Yeah. Mike is back! Yeah, yeah back from jail. We're back to the new normal, which will soon be broken up as I move down south and Travis travels across all of America with a, sh- a strangling cat. I'm trying to get clams in every state. <laughs> oh, you're going. White Castle yeah. is a great resource to make too much. No, sense. no, no, no. <laughs> I want fresh. I want like I want to get clams in every state, but I want them in the half shell. Mm. <laughs> Middle of the country probably has got some good clams. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying Nebraska clams, dog. <laughs> yeah, Do those it. mountain clams. Yeah, no, I'm getting ready to go cross country with a cat. Clams. I took him upstate. He was mewing a lot. Now I need to get him. Now I need to get him more drugs than West Virginia because I don't want to hear him. <laughs> uh pillbilly country okay guys you know the most uh my favorite part mm. excuse my language right now most what does that even mean favorite part of the show how was your oh, week good let's start with let's start with you cody i know you got a lot going on oh good okay hey hi how are you um actually had an eventful week that i'm not happy about god damn it uh I was go- i'm going on a road trip mo- much like most of the boys here in the nearby future, so I needed to get something to a little lap laptop machine to do roast mortem on on the road with, and uh, I go to the Apple Store because I'm a bitch like that, and um, I, I know exactly what I want. I, I, I show up, and there's just a bouncer at the fucking Apple Store door, and I'm just like, "Can I get in there?" And he's like, "Do you have an appointment to come in? Like, do you have an appoint? Do you have a shopping appointment, sir?" And I'm just like, "No." And, and this is a Hawaiian bouncer, so it's like the rock. Yeah, he was he was he was like okay. a, an unphotogenic rock. Like okay. he, he had like the shaved head and he was just like, how is it? And I'm just like, not good because you're not letting me in the store to give money, you know, in exchange for the exact product I want. And he's like, well, I can let you in in like two hours from now. And I'm, uh, I'm just like, are you, are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, yeah it's yeah. the next available shopping appointment. And I'm like, I, I don't need to shop. I, I literally need to trade money for the thing I want. Like, But you're shopping. I, I guess. Uh, to me, shopping is like waiting through the indecision and then like coming to terms. I just want to I just want to trade money for the thing I know I already want. Right. And you wanted a rose gold MacBook Air. Yeah, right? yeah that's more or less okay. correct. Oh, nice and then I, I, I think I'm being clever because I'm like, all right, fine. You sit right there. And then I, and I go find like a bench and I do the curbside pickup. So he has to bring it to me. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, ah, I start doing it. And then like, you know, my card clears. I pay for like the laptop. And then as soon as it clears, it's just like, choose your pickup window. And I'm just looking at this like. Oh my God! This isn't going to be immediate, is it? Is it? And then, sure, sure enough, hours from now, it'll yeah, find it. sure enough, I like go on this like scroll down, and it's just like soonest you can pick up is four forty five. I'm like, God damn it! Are you kidding me? Like, I already own the thing, and I have to like. It, it seems like they were like just hell bent on crowbarring me to wait like multiple hours for something I already own. Question: Yeah, That's did you use your time wisely? And have several apple martinis at, a at the local steak. PF Chang. At a Philly, Philly cheesesteak. Oh, Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> okay, that's go- that's close. I thought you were going to say a Philly cheesesteak at PF Chang. That would That'd be, be good. interesting. Yeah. Uh, but like they, but they just ego roll it. Good. That's that's nice. Well, Cody, I'm sorry you're dealing with that. I mean, um, just, yeah, it was just like they wanted you should me learn to how to wrestle. That's <laughs> that, you should learn how to wrestle, and this wouldn't happen. It's just like why yeah. why can't you just bring it out to me? He's like, I don't know who you are, like. You could be picking someone else's up, someone else's order up, and I'm just like, I will press my stupid face and my ID against your glass window so you can scan it and throw me my thing. But they're just like, you have to wait two hours for us to for us to bring you your own property. We need you to wait for two hours. And I was irate. And oh, by the way, like literally like 30 minutes before this, I got my second Fauci ouchie. So like I have like the fucking sweats and I'm like short of breath and I look like I have oh, COVID because oh, you kind of do. You have like baby COVID. Yeah. Baby COVID. Yeah. And like and when it was time for me to go in, they're just like, sir, I need to take your temperature. And I'm just like, oh, no, 
<laughs> they're gonna, I've waited just, two hours and they're gonna boot just have me. them put the laptop on the ground, kick it to you through yeah. the door. It's got. I was asking yeah. them f- for that, and they were just like, "No, we need to get you in here and check your ID." And I was just like, "I, I hated the entire experience." So Th- this is why I re- I I highly believe in lowering the minimum wage. <laughs> okay, well, well, you know okay. Apple Store doesn't make minimum wage. So the highlight of Cody's week is that he got a rusty trombone from Tim Cook. More or less. It felt like I'm it. very sorry. And he's into it. He's a, yeah. his memoir. It's mostly about rusty trombone ceremonies. It. Oh, <laughs> Mike, you told me an interest, interesting story um, I that, like you, to repeat it. that you don't want to repeat on air. So if you have any other stories, now would be the time to get it out. Um, No stories. Well, a word of actually, I shouldn't even talk about this. Do anymore. whatever you want. I don't you want could, to talk about it. That, well, how was your week? Just tell me, uh, say good or bad. Do you have any fried um, eggs? I'm really sorry you I, ran I, I over those back, 10 dogs. Can I come back to this? You want to come back? Oh, All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll lap around. Oh, I'll lap around. Yeah. <laughs> think Great. About it. Uh, Travis, how was your week? I mean, I kind of talked about my cat and going upstate. Uh, what else did I really do? I mean, it hasn't been that eventful, dog. Uh, I, mean, I think the big thing was my cat. And, uh, you know, he's mewing. Very cool. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Um. Tom, do it. 13 hours in a car, driving from Savannah, Georgia to Long Island. How how many cats? Great job. How many cats in your car? None. Wow. You got to put more cats. You're doing it right. I I mustn't. I I realized you guys remember me complaining about eczema last week. Uh Yeah. Uh, Some of that was because I touched a cat. Well, (laughs) you know what? I think the cat was just trying to build up your immunity. Yeah. What do you do? You hear the phlegm in my voice? What do you think the cat got from touching you? Yeah, probably got off because that's what they do. <laughs> well, they're smart. I watched the same day I, I touched this cat uh, as a as a olive leaf between myself and the entire species. Olive branch, yeah, excuse me, go. olive leaf. What is this? <laughs> the olive garden. It, it, yeah, it's olive less garden. Compassion. As an olive garden between the two of us. <laughs> um, I did watch a dog that was easily 170 pounds hump a giant stuffed penguin. That's pretty hot. Oh, it was pretty hot, cool. Dude. It was 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh. My good friend, Storm King, uh, was barking at me. Oh. And he started humping a thing. That's a Savannah thing. You've got to know. It's very local. Down south. It's very local. Yeah. Shout out to the Bonaventure Cemetery, where I'll be doing all of my future recording. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> You're going to get a mausoleum and record in there with some soundproofing? I'll be recording next to Charles Lemon's grave as I take his name and identity in the future. You're you're listening to the future Charles Lemons. Charles Lemons was heavily in debt, Tom. I hate well, to inform you. Well, good thing Charles Lemons has a son. Uh, now, <laughs> Mike, we're circling back. Hot seat. Anything. Uh, you can just say good or bad. It's when fine. you stalk a girl, make sure um, she loves you back. <laughs> you know what? Good. You know what? That's, That's great. Advice. That's great. Yeah, good advice. And if, they, and if they seem like they love you back, it's bullshit because they don't. All right. Now we're not doing great boyfriend. advice. I uh, I gotta say, can you cut so, that out? I don't want to hear it. Uh, that's, you're, we're leaving uh, it in because yeah. it's an excellent segue, and I must say that I can think of an entire country that is in love with a woman, and I believe that has to do with who we're talking about tonight. Is that right, Travis? Uh-oh. Yes, we do. Just like maybe Mike's woman. I don't know. He's stalking. Just like <laughs> just like this woman, she was crazy. She's staking. I like crazy, the crazy lady. lady. Tonight, the crazy we ones are fun. Are. Using my phone and dropped it already. <laughs> it's not yeah, good. Why? Tonight's going to be a full of mystery. Keep drinking. I love, I love the abuse. <laughs> I love abuse. I love abuse. Uh, that makes you, the bond grow tighter. You know, you, when someone you get real abusive with people. When you wallop someone in the head with a snow well, shovel Mike, at the right time. The acoustics from the hole you've dug are amazing right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? A little psychological abuse doesn't hurt. All right. So tonight we are going way back in time. I feel like we've been in like the 20th, 19th century around that time really good old for days. a while now. Right. As I think the earliest we've gone back in recent episodes has been uh, 1600s. 1600s. Wow. Late, late, teens, late 1600s. Tonight we are going back to a little time I like to call the 15th century. Oh, nice. Which, that's the 1400s then, right? Yeah, which right. is the 15th century. Doing good. I, I, I always hated that, that shit. Like, Me too. Like, I'm, actually, just... I'm entirely on Mike's side on this. Why is it the 15th century when it's the 14th round up? Because you can't have a zero sense of oh, century. That shit. Then let's not use the term. Uh. Let's <laughs> never use that term. I know. It confuses me too. It's kind of dumb. So, yet again, tonight we are entering the smooth brain world of Catholicism and we are roasting another saint. Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> and just like just like Mother Teresa, this saint had boobs and fun hole. But don't tell our subject that, because we are roasting Joan of Arc. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh. Hey, it wasn't uh. I never. I'm not gonna even say anything. <laughs> you just. You just. I was thinking. I was thinking of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. That's the first thing. That came That's to my fine. Mind. that. Yeah, they fucking think it's pit stop there. Oh could you, yeah, they did. Could you imagine if they remade that movie again without it sucking? And it was just about everyone we covered. And it was like <laughs> It'd be pretty fun. It would be great. It would be. I would love to direct that man. Right. San Dimas. Alex Winters. So you might say, Whoa, Trav, how are you gonna roast Joan? Yeah. She's a powerful woman. Mm. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Like China. Yeah. Like China. <laughs> yeah. Like people that wear cat ears on their head. It's all true. And I say to you, no, ma'am. This woman was not powerful. She was crazy, and she heard voices and threw herself out of windows. Oh. Really? Yes. Well, that's cool. You mean she's like Liz Cheney? Yeah, yeah, Good. exactly. Good for her. She's like, I didn't vote for Trump. Oh, I did. Oh, wait, I didn't like that. Oh, right, right. I forgot. <laughs> she is like, I, oh, God, everyone at home, I'm leaving this in. I'm t- learning. Uh, I like how it's like right in my face like this. Yeah, it's got to like pretend it you're sucking a dick. Like, fucks my But eyes. the microphone. Yeah, Mike's been belongs. working on his mic technique. He's, he's getting better, I promise. Mm. Okay, so, so <sighs> hearing voices from God or horny saints was not something completely out of the normal in the 15th century. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like people in the 21st century, people believe QAnon is a real person, not just some collective ignorant mass hysteria manifesting in hive mind echo chamber. Why are you making this political? Why are you making this political? What are you talking about? Why make it political? Yo, I'm just trying to protect kids, right? I'm just trying to protect kids. Maybe I'm involved. Maybe I'm not. Probably not. I know what you just said. Uh, uh, (laughs) Good for you, Mike. Tom is actually the groundskeeper for Epstein Island. That's why he's getting all the time. Oh, word? Yeah, come on. Look at these hands. These you hands. Tell are... me and give me an, an, an invite. Do, do you want wow, one? Oh, Mike. Everyone wishes they didn't now. I mean, what do you mean? I would not go there. Okay, good. Good <laughs> save. <laughs> but when people talk about Joan of Arc, they always focus on the powerful woman aspect. I like it. Uh, it's not like she's, and they never mention the fact that she's some Luigi, Luigi's mansion ass bitch talking to ghosts and shit. That's pretty cool, talking Same. to ghosts. Talking yeah. ghosts. You like to ghosts? I wish I could do that. It's, I mean, it'd be pretty scary if I did talk to ghosts. Mm. Now, before we jump into this spooky French bitch, <laughs> we need to give a little bit of context to the world she was born into. Was it? And spoilers: Joan does not live a very long life, so. A lot of this is going to be a little bit of a history episode. I'm okay with this. Okay. Yeah. So in 1412, when Joan was born, France and England were in a little thing called the Hundred Years War, which actually lasted 116 years. Sheesh. That's a long time. But yeah, they're not going to call it the 116 year war. The 116. Yeah, Yeah, I guess that's kind of like Stone Cold if it was one. Can you smell what the crock pot's cooking? No, because it's hermetic. A couple of generations shooting. fighting one war. So That's this long. this war started way back in 1337 when Charles the Fourth of France died, and he didn't have any boys to inherit the throne. Oh, he's got to have them boys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is kind of interesting because this is almost like we already did like the layup to this episode when we did the two parter on uh, King Edward the Second. Nice guy. Yeah, a cuck boy. Yeah. Uh-huh. So basically, Eddie's wife, that Eddie Chu's wife, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabella of France, was King Charles the Fourth's sister, and felt that her son, Eddie the Third, was the rightful heir of France. I and remember England. that. Right. I remember that from that episode, that two-parter. Yeah. So we got this French bitch in England. It's like, yo, my fish and chips boy owns both of it. Interesting. And that yeah. started a 116-year war. Imagine that. The guy was 16 when the claims were happening. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's... They didn't get to see the end of the war. They were like, all right, we'll keep fighting. Well, Mike, that's like your friend or something that has both a PlayStation account and an Xbox account. You can't live in both worlds. It's true. You got to leave one. You got you to gotta spend more time with one than the other. It's Well, it, it's kind of like those same people arguing, but they're using a 360 and a PS3. Like, they're both entirely antiquated at this yeah. point. Yeah. And you're wasting your time. 
These are generations old. So the French aristocracy was not going to let some brown sauce sucking cockney become king of the vino boofing kingdom of France. Yeah. <laughs> so thus, the Hundred Years War begun. Oh, vino. Now basically, there. Yeah, I like vino boofing. I mean, you you done it right, Cody? I have not vino boof. Vino boof. You know, boof is Mike. Oh, you shove some up your ass. Yeah, you know what vino dip is? It in some old. Yeah, dip it in some old grapes up the butthole. You get drunk like that? Hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> technically. Oh, man, I'm going to try that. Old, old Yeah, we were grapes, just talking, though, you're Mike. trying to quit s- smoking weed, and you're not trying to drink anymore as much. I'm trying to let the, uh, take the edge off a little bit at night. Right, so you just throw a pillowcase soaked in uh, Chardonnay <laughs> into your old Ain, and then see what happens. <laughs> it's not drinking. Well, it's not I'll, drinking. Doing that later before I get in the old Via Cal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> French, I like it. So basically, over the Something course blue. over the course of the hundred years, there's a bunch of different fra- factions in France and England claiming that they had the golden boy and rightful heir to the French throne. And the war ebbed and flowed over that the course of the hundred years, um, but it was almost exclusively fought in France, and England was like left untouched. The English used a tactic called, called uh, scorched earth. Ooh, good stuff. Which is basically, grilling grapes. Oh. It's mean. It's a mean tactic. It, it comes up several times on the show. If you don't know, it's just burning everything in your path. Yeah. Yep. It's when you really don't like. Someone. You don't. It's how you make Afghanistan great again. Oh. Well, no. I'm gonna really. Yeah, I'm gonna really get back to the schoolyard where, like, you know, you could like, I don't know, like, spit on someone's tray that you don't like that just got lunch, or you could scorch that earth and fucking like nasty knock it out, knock that shit on the ground. Right, it's all useless now. Yeah. Or if you're me, you'll just eat it off the floor. You just eat their food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no sense. Travis Travis knows how to win wars. I do. Play a lot of civilization, a game that you hate. I don't hate it. I don't I just don't get it. That's all. Well, you gotta start no, eating off either. the floor. That's the it looks interesting. Though. Uh, yeah, you gotta start eating off the floor. That's the first tactic. Well, my brother in law, he's he's got a he's got a uh, a master's in library science. He loves this game too, so I don't know if and I've never seen him eat off the floor. My dad also liked it and he got divorced, so Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So flash forward to the 15th century. We're talking. Woo! Joan. Joan is born. Basically, we have this Charles the Sixth, who is what he claims is a rightful heir of France, and he would be. I mean, if you're not putting in all these weird factions, they're like, my boy is better than your boy. <laughs> <laughs> my heir is an honor student. Yeah, <laughs> Charles is the famous king that lost the famous battle of Agincourt. Guys, I heard that one. No, nope. pretend if that. I didn't. So basically, um, this is the origin or the legend of the reason why the British give the two finger salute. Oh, uh, oh, oh, a dickhead! Oh, the the archers, right? Yeah. Oh, so this was a battle that was won. Peace, the peace sign? Was, no, that's not the peace about? sign. It's back backwards. So a backwards peace sign in England is a fuck you. Really? Yes, yeah. Mike. Yeah, it's it's the English stone. Oi, he's good. Like a duck dickhead. to water. Oi. Dickhead, oi. I like that. I didn't even know that. Someone do this. Well, what that was is this battle. <laughs> it was a bunch of French and English knights. But the reason why the English won is because they had long bows. And so they killed all the French knights and, like, massacred the French. Jeez. But if the French caught an English longbow, they would cut their two fingers off. Oh. So the legend is is that they flipped off the Brit- the French being like, I still got my two fingers, idiot. I'm going to kill you, bitch. No bluff. Right. No bluff. So Where's the middle finger come from? You guys know? What's that? The middle finger? Where does that come from? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think Fred Durst. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it, he started I that one. I think it's one. something similar so. with like Native American archers, actually. The middle finger? Yeah. I don't know. I could be I wrong. Mean, I, I sometimes stick it into my butthole. I'd be upset if it was missing when I jerk off. I use it for things. Yeah, I, I, I definitely use it for things. It's like a hot dog, kind of. Is this the, the rest of the show where we, Joan of Arc? <laughs> she died at 19. We have to fill for time. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Parr, Frank Fingers. So Charles VI lost this big battle. It's a famous one. If you're, you know anything about history, you know about Agincourt, guys. But anyway. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> uh, Charles VI was also known as Charles the Mad. Because the dude thought he was actually made of glass. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Like, straight up Unbreakable style. Nice. Unbreakable glass, you say? No, no, the movie Unbreakable, oh. Samuel Jackson. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thanks. that glass. He's an angry 
<laughs> a- angry old black glass man, which is a lot of analogies. A lot of adjectives, too. Right. One person. Adjectives. That's what I meant to say. Why did I say? Sorry, I'm tired. 13 hours in a car. You forget words. <laughs> What's the disease called? Uh, glass bones. What? Like, glass bonesisms? It's a disease yeah. where you have like glass bones. Like your bones are like fused together. Probably is that what he had? No, he just thought he had. Uh, Rheumatoid arthritis. You just got to drink some Ovaltine, idiot. It's bad. It's a bad <laughs> way to be. Okay, continue. Yeah. We got more of this French shit out of the way. <laughs> the entire so episode. we made. Yeah, we may double back to Charles the Sixteenth because, as you know, on Roast Mortem, we love making fun of people with mental illness, especially uh, royals. It's easy yeah. and fun. Yeah. Everyone laughs, even them. Yeah, I think everybody has mental illness, yeah. right? Everyone's yeah. got a little something. something I, Mike, right? I, I love the attitude. Mike. Yeah, right? everyone's got something wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. it makes with well, that attitude keeps it easier to laugh. Yeah. If everyone's <laughs> got it, no one's got it. Yeah, right. maybe some of them can't operate forklifts, but yeah, fun. You, know you don't make fun and of someone's them. Someone's got to do it. We they're, they're missing they're not missing out on anything except operating <laughs> <laughs> i used to play Shenmue, and part of that game was going to work and operating a forklift which is know, miserable seems like you live the dream dude i'm so, so certified so certified. <laughs> certified freak yeah continue yeah, yeah. <laughs> continue please so uh because charlie oh, the sixth was insane Basically, his wife, Queen Isabeau, presided over the Regency Council. So there was her and a bunch of French dukes, you know, that were like, all right, we're going to manage the country because this guy's like, I'm glass. I'm Mr. Glass. Okay, Mr. Glass. Sounds good. Yeah. Definitely some good drugs back then. Oh, yeah. Mushrooms. They got mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, probably eating a lot of mushrooms. Mm. So the two big dick dukes were... Uh, Philip the Bold, Duke of Burgundy, and Louis the First, or Louis the First, Duke of Orleans. Uh, the Bold and the okay. First. What a what a yeah. good tag team for a threesome. Well, both of these dukes hated each other. Oh, one's bold, one's the first. Like you, you can't you can't have someone that's. I feel like if you're if you're bold, and then someone's like, I'm number one. I would say they're gonna fight. Yeah, beef. Yeah, I mean, when you see those kinds of things on fast food menus, your eye is drawn. Yeah. <laughs> bold new flavors. Bold, Bo- bold flavors. Bold Try our barbecue. new pepper cheese fries <laughs> over at <laughs> Checkers, a place where you're certainly a champion for pulling through this drive through The that most true. French establishment you can go to. God, I when I'm ready fries. to kill myself, I'm going to load up on checkers. They got good fries. Can you guys get a sponsorship from checkers for this uh, show? Uh, only if it leads to me killing myself. Well, time's moving down south. You, you can eat yourself to death. Yeah, time's moving down south. There's rallies down there. Yeah, oh, rally I got rallies down there, which is just as terrible. Dude, it's all fast food down there, unless you're unless you're rich like me. You're, you're pretty much limited. Even the, it, the grocery aisles. Just fast, fast food? cold fast Ooh. food. It's all just cold. That sounds fast food. awesome. Actually. It's great. You'd love it. I'd, I'd probably be dead by now. Yes. Yeah, you would be. You're gonna come live with me. By the way, we're gonna kill ourselves together. Hey, let's do it. Suicide. It's, it's warm Continue. down there. <laughs> so these dukes didn't like each other, and basically, they're along with some other dukes. They all fought each other. A few were assassinated here and there, but the end result is that Burgundy, like the territory of Burgundy. Gets in bed with France's rival during the Hundred Years' oh. War. Because remember, they're still at war. So the Burgundians were allies with the English. Oh. Fuckers. So now, not only was France at war with England, but they were having a civil war. Shit got extra fucked. All right. He oh, did too many he asterisks. It's like a big mess. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. yeah. It's a fucking hot mess. I didn't grow up in that shit, but yo, what's going on here? That's oh. where Joan's born into. So can you blame her? Yeah, yes, for what? Yes, we can. <laughs> can you blame her for being <laughs> born? Know. We yeah. haven't gotten anywhere. There's no story arc. So these Burgundians <laughs> took on the same scorched... So Spence. Yeah, the Burgundians <laughs> took on the same scorched earth policy as the the English did. But they're doing it on their own neighbors. Um, they had a bunch of marauders, like Burgundian marauders and British, going around raping and mass murdering Fuck. French villages. What a time to be alive, right, Mike? I, I guess so. I mean, shit, bag ads and fucking rape. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good that, episode that title, Mike. Say. Yeah, big bag ads and, and rape. rape. No, it's fine. We'll mention that, a few other It's terrible things. to do shit like that back then. It was just like kind of like common, right? Yeah, Mike, this is a good save. When you use the R word like that, you have to say what? how bad I it is. I said grape. 
Because you know it's France. Oh, I, I heard you, you wrong. Well, yeah. kudos I, well, to I, you I, I mumble a lot. Wrong. Twice. <laughs> I don't know right. anyone knew I had kind of disabled. And I'll one up you later. Continue. <laughs> so speaking of being alive, enter our smooth brain heroine, <laughs> Joan. Joan de. Oh, Yay. That's French. It's nice. Yeah, it's Joan. Ooh, yeah. De. D E. Just D. De. Oh, dark. Swinging swords. Yeah, shit. Joan de. She got the big D. Right. Yeah, big old D. Small D. Small D. Joanne okay. Zark. So, so she was born in Don Remy uh, to Ooh. Jacques d'Arc and Isabella Romy. Just some random ass. Jacques. You're, you're pretty good with a French accent, Travis. Jacques. Oh! English could use some more. Yeah. Work. No, well, I, basically, if you look at one of the best cartoon characters ever, the crab that speaks French. I thought you were going to say Pepe Le Pew. What are you talking about? My crab. hero. Yeah, you're, uh, yeah, I thought he was going to go Pepe Le Pew. Yes, being awesome. <laughs> Which is I'm like, a rapist. Skunk. Rapist. He just, wa- he just wanted to be loved, that dude. He was just a fucking uh, verge. Yeah, just like imagine if that was still an ongoing cartoon. What would he do? He'd just be on Instagram. He'd be bopping around. He'd be platonic. Yeah. Girl's place of work. It's fine. He'd probably yeah, he'd have be platonic. No, yeah, he'd be platonic. spending ten grand on OnlyFans every month. <laughs> he'd be, he'd be just robbing enough to a computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Could so, you imagine a live action feature with that? Who would you it's cast? A... Crystalia, of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You can probably do a great oh. French accent. Crystalia and the 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 Louis cat the cat is Bella Delphine. Oh, Who's that? <laughs> she's um, the bathwater chick. Bathwater chick. She does porn now. Was, yeah, she does. Her booty hole. Bathwater chick. What does that even mean? She sold bathwater to uh, incels. What's that? Simps. Uh, she sold bathwater. Oh. Simps. Entre- you mean an entrepreneur? She's an entrepreneur. I actually oh, really great like French word, Mike. That's a that's. That's fucking pretty smart. I like her business model. I like her ethics. Continue, <laughs> Travis. <laughs> this shit. Joan's village was fucked. Joan survived her village being burnt and Burgundian bastards like raping people. And, you know, she got out of it. She I don't think she was raped. She was very proud that she was a virgin, but she survived these like these crazy horrors pillages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you expect her to be a little jaded and a little fucked up after seeing that shit growing up? A little up? bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Also, she's. That's all you know too. is just people getting raped and murdered all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think as we go on, I think she, she gets to see her idols and <clears throat> could maybe make some better judgments. The French can hold a vendetta. She didn't hear voices, so you could say that she was a pro crown fangirl, right? Like she's, you know, Burgundian suck and English suck. Um, even though the crown was lavishly eating croissants and the, uh, you know, roasting quail titties. All while um, cool. the French uh, peasants and regular people, illiterate people, were starving to death and being raped. So these royals are like, oh, I'm just going to spend all this money. Right, right. Um, the I care for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like somehow this behavior has been adopted by every celebrity ever. Yeah. Very strange. Anyone in power. Let me, presidents. Let me just say, if I was ever like actively being raped, like witnessing somebody okay. eat the food that would make that would tick me off the most would definitely be quail eggs. You know what I mean? Like if I'm taking it up the ass and I see someone eating like refried beans, I'd be like, I'd be okay with that. But as soon as it gets to around quail egg fanciness, I'm like, you son of a bitch. Uh well, Cody, um, I, I hate to break the news, <laughs> but I don't think you'd be in that situation. I, I, yeah. We're doing a hypothetical thing to pad for time. Well, I don't know. Cody's taking a southern <laughs> trip across America. He might enter some weird backwaters. Yeah, true. maybe rape. Hey, not quail eggs are eggs, delicious, though. by the way. I, I know that's why oh, it's okay. angry. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's why it would make me angry. It's just like, oh, I wish I had quail eggs. I, I, I wish I had two quail eggs in my mouth and one less penis in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, your brain is very strange sometimes, Cody. Uh, that it I am I do understand. From the COVID shot. So, gotcha. <laughs> so, Cody, here. This is for Yay. you. What is your favorite type of archetypal character plot? Uh, spe- specifically during a magical adventure type uh, movie. Uh, uh, the redemption plot, I'm going to say. Uh, fail. That's not your favorite. What is my what favorite? About the cho- what about the chosen one? The chosen, Cho- the chosen to one to redeem himself, of course. Okay. You know, that's, okay. What I, that's, that, that's the vein I was in. Do you mean like Harry Potter? 
yeah, there's only one person. It's the chosen one. Right. right. No one else could do this. Luke right. Skywalker, uh, he did it. Yeah. No one else did. No one could do it because she was born oh. to the mean man. Right. Rocky. Couldn't do that Han Solo there or Princess Leia. No, Han Solo is not the chosen one. But he's not chosen. He was he was basically a disposable piece of junk <laughs> to Luke Skywalker, who's trying to very much tongue his sister. Very strange film. <laughs> This is people's that, memories, yeah, that was, and I jogged I them in a certain that, way. Yeah. I forgot he was tonguing his sister for a He thought. was tonguing his sister for a half hour. They were inside of Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, this, the, no the, the Snyder Cut got rid of most of that. Oh, my goodness. No, but Cody, I feel like uh, we, 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 we worked on videos and TV shows. I feel like 50% of all like fantasy t- TV shows are... No, more than 50. Like 80% yeah, of all fantasy three are the, cho- the chosen one. The, the chosen one, like trying to like avenge someone that you never actually see yeah so jones village dom remy uh was near a magical forest oh, called what boys boys chess um and it was prophesized by none other than the french captain of the british national lemon party himself lemon party. merlin huh? did you say lemon party lemon party yeah merlin, you lost stinky me. boy Wow. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, so Merlin, the guy from Sword Stone. Yeah. The fuck are you guys talking about? You know Merlin, dude? Saucer fucking wizard robes. Saucer. Oh yeah, you don't like the way I you say, say it. Saucer. You say it weird. Sorcerer. <laughs> saucer? Saucer. Saucer. It's saucer, like saucer, like almonds and almonds. It's like ranch, dude. <laughs> ranch. Saucier. Ranch. It's ranch, Travis. So Merlin was like, dude, there's gonna be a maid, and maid basically means a virgin. Um, mm. From this magical woods right near Joan of Arc's village that's going to one day save France. About around here, approximately, give or take-ish, nine hectares. Yeah. It's going to be a woman. She's That's all I got. And she's not going to fuck. She's not going to... We're, we're, we're going to trust her. Oh, so, it is like, so it is <laughs> yeah. like Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah, because he never nope. fucked. He, he should have. Just sort of done it and be like, oops. Well, I mean, that's... <laughs> Who knows what happened after episode six? There's a <laughs> no lot one. of people who get off on those stuffed animals. Yeah, there's some bugs. Well, you need your, uh, your what's it called? Mm-hmm. Testosterone. You can't be splurging everywhere to save the world, you know? True. You got to limit your testosterone that. streams. Auto saucy. Exactly. You got <laughs> manage so, it. So Joan had heard these these stories of Merlin. She's like, why can't that be me? <laughs> Merlin? That's right. I like that. You fucking put your mind to it. Yeah, anything. I could be that virgin that lives in the woods. And yeah, the Merlin female one. Out. Yeah, especially nowadays. Yeah. I self-identify <laughs> as the female chosen one. So I feel like we've all been in this situation. You've all been like 13-ish, like preteens, usually when it happens. And you read some uh, philosophy or like see some fantasy show. And you start to think that, oh, I might have that ability, like telekinesis or something. Yeah, You're yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm I might start experimenting with drugs and like like you know like oh dude I'm yeah, like so that. important. Yeah. Mike, when did that happen? You're still going through that phase, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. What's what <laughs> did you watch? You what were you watching? What The Wire? You're a detective now. <laughs> I was watching uh, Prison Break. I'm practicing going to prison. Right, good. That's, <laughs> That's good. Handy you for have you. that ability. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I believe in you. I've been I've been looking up how to like you know you know. Three meals a day, work out for an hour, <laughs> just sit inside the rest of the day. <laughs> this is going pretty good. You got to carve soap. Yeah, yeah but self, yeah, it's carving soap, fucking right into myself. It's beautiful. Right. Yeah. So Joan, obviously these, these stories have been circulating. She obviously knew what they were. She's sitting in her garden one day trying to like lift a leaf with her mind or something. <sighs> and she's like, all of a sudden she sees St. Michael. It's a threesome. St. Michael, Catherine, St. Mike, uh, sorry, St. Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret. I think they, they call all that like Trinity in the church. No, nah, that, um, this, this not is, really. There's the Holy Trinity, and now it's just a threesome. Threesome. Yeah. It's also when two choir boys go in the back. Oh, boy. Yeah, to play Daddy Ladder. <laughs> Dadder. <laughs> Father, Father, I send Ladder. You hear the, the Holy Ghost out of me. The Eucharist is at the tip you gotta <laughs> just climb. That's the, the Jesus tip. You gotta, you gotta find it. It's you know, guys. This is probably low hanging fruit. Well, it's been in the news for so long. We're not funny. Yeah, Carlin's been doing that bit forever. So she's he's dead now. He she, died from it. 
she's sitting in the garden, like it's kind of like that guy. I feel like there was a YouTuber a while ago that just used to take um, what's that drug? Uh, salvia, MDMA. salvia, uh, and try yeah. to garden. That was really funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was our great video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's sitting there, and all of a sudden, these three hot um, saints pop up. Okay. And Michael's like, sup, babe? Uh, you want to go drive uh, England out of France? Because uh, uh, you should do That's that. a lot. And, and you should probably crown the dolphin of Rem, king of France. Now, there were some weird words in there. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Think an echo of the dolphin, right? I always think echo the dolphin. Flipper is non-existent. Do you think she was eating mushrooms? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This Excellent. is mushroom territory. Yeah. France? You could oh, yeah. Nice boys. She was probably tripping out on that one. She's like, holy fuck. So St. Michael was not talking about a ocean rapist whale, which is a dolphin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, she was talking about the next in line to the crown of France. It's actually pronounced Dauphin, but I said it looks like dolphin. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the eldest son of the French monarch. So Charles the uh, Charles the sixth Dauphin was you guessed it Charles the seventh of France. Very original. <sighs> Only the seventh one in a row, right? Seven yeah, Charles. Seven Charles. That's my new restaurant. What do you serve? <laughs> it does sound like a restaurant name. <laughs> does it not? Charles. Seven Five Charles. Come down. It's my it's, it's like yeah. my TGI steakhouse. Fridays. It's a steakhouse, but it's like. It's like Outback, but from Canada. Okay? <laughs> so a right next to Tim Hortons. Yeah. Denim only inside. Denim inside. You come on in. It's just like, hey, welcome to Seven Charles. Can I get you endless crackers? Poutine? <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the dude that Joan was instructed by God's saints themselves to crown. Who? Hmm? Who Charles is it? Seven. Oh, Charles, Charles Seven. Charles Seven. <laughs> I thought the steakhouse. <laughs> Very good, sir. <laughs> and as an old person. So Charles the Seventh, along with his mom that you mentioned, Queen Isabelle, um, were both fat fucks. Very large ah. people for the time. I mean, you think like they're probably a little bit bigger than me, but this is when people are like skinny boys. Right. Everyone mm-hmm. like you were you were very fat at the time, Mike. You've lost a lot of weight. You're actually I'd be considered now. fat back You'd then. You'd be considered poor back then. Oh. You were rich when you were fat. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you're still poor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least I would be. Uh, yeah, <laughs> poor fatness. Uh, I'd probably, man. yeah, yeah. I'd probably die of like the plague back then. Oh, I'd definitely be dead. I'm so gaunt as it is. <laughs> so, so Mike, you've got like a well proportioned body, oh, but you, you know the type of like fatties that have really short legs and kind of hobble around. Yeah, yeah. like just like way too big, like a like ch- rascal scooter type, chode legs, yeah. kind of. Mm-hmm. These I feel were, for those people. That was the French crown. They were just their short legs, Stubby. big old body. It's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. Elliptical machine. If they had it back then, I'd tell them. The, que- <laughs> the queen actually was so fat that she had her own rascal scooter. Wow. Ooh, what was its name? Damn. Of course, it was a wheelchair because, uh, you know, they didn't have motors back then. But I, I, this was the 14, 1425. I wanted it to be a peasant. The- that was just only job was piggyback riding the queen. Oh I believe God. it. I mean, a couple kids named Ras- Stymie. Fucking Stymie and Farina. Yeah. Cody, you're not that far off because she also forced her subjects to go on pilgrimages to some place in France to play- to pray for her menstruation cycle. Oh, that's important. Oh. Like, oh, I got pains in the you. That's an easy job. Let's go over there and pray. Yeah, but imagine some, like, like all right. We've all, you know, with your friends, you're like, oh, okay, I feel bad for you. Here's some chocolate. Yeah, exactly. But you got to go walk three towns over to fucking get chocolate and then walk back. You can't thought in prayer from your, like, couch, Mike. You got to go, like, you got to go on a fucking trek and then thought in prayer. Could you imagine if you were a woman back then and you had your own menstrual cycle pain and you had to walk to pray for someone else's? Now, that is torture. That is rude as hell. That is rude. Yeah, that's rude. rude. Despite Queenie's appearance, she's a bit of a whore. I love collecting aged French penis brie. Come. Oh, oh. thank you for <laughs> clarifying. <laughs> yeah. Hey, respect. Penal brie. Nice. So, so it was said that Charles VII was not, uh, in fact, Charles VI's son, but in fact, uh, the Duke of Orleans, uh, Louis I's son. 
like a bastard so, child. Yeah, they, there was some talks that this guy wasn't even legit. But who cares? They had Mori back then. They cared back then because everyone was killing each other for a hundred years. True. Yeah, things didn't make any sense. Like if I had a son, I wouldn't care. Yeah. So like, whatever, go get a job, dude, or don't. Uh, start be a, homeless. Start a TikTok. I want to retire. Yeah. I don't really care if you're king because I'm not. Oh, maybe I'm king. Guess what? Get a job at Arby's. Yeah, that's good parenting right there. Yeah, right? So <laughs> my kid's going to kill me with a vacuum cleaner. He's going to push it down the stairs. Charles the hey, VII. You're, you're speaking into existence. <laughs> Charles the Second was a typical rich prince. He spent money far beyond the royal coffers, ah. putting his kingdom further and further into debt. That's how you do it. All spending thousands while they had a perpetual war and was supposed to be paying troops and shit like that. I didn't that. like how right. our financial advisor just agreed with that spending proposition. <laughs> <laughs> when you're the king, who cares? Just fucking make more money. It happens, though. Like, uh, what was it, Ludwig II? Yeah. Yeah, from uh, more recently, an 18th century king. Yeah. Excuse yeah, he was st- a, a, a 17th century king. Yeah, he had, like, the original uh, fucking Philips Hue lights on his pool. Right? I'm actually entirely confused. A 19th century king. I just went the opposite way with it. See, this is what oh, I said no. at the, the beginning of the episode. <laughs> Fuck it. Anyway, Ludwig's out there. He's building castles, and everyone's going, you're insane. And he's like, I know. <laughs> I know. You you check out this what are you going to do? I'm the fucking king. I got a dick, and I'm going to say it's big, and you got to agree. Because <laughs> I'm the king. I got the crown. They yeah. have crowns too. Is that a real thing? Crowns? That was yeah, they have crowns. Yeah, they, they, might not, nice. they don't wear them all the time, but they, you know, this is royal jewels. This shit probably yeah. hurts. The fuck fucking heavy. It's pro- heavy as shit. Yeah, that shit looks. It's all decorative. Fuck. Like if you were a peasant visiting the king, he wouldn't put it on for you. Yeah. So on top of all this spending, he was also responsible for mo- murking at least one of the dukes of Burgundy because apparently a whole bunch of them died really quickly. Wow. But I mean, that's Oops. shitty. It's human. But he did this during a like. Waving the white flag like peace treaty oh, the signing. Flag. Oh, right. They bas- they basically met on a bridge, and he just like had some dude fucking kill him. <laughs> he should have known. The other guy should have known. Yeah. Should have brought dude too. So this obese idiot man was the man that Joan felt could do no wrong. He was the man chosen by God to be the sole leader of France. Right. Good. Good on him. Good. Yeah. And good for her for recognizing his sheer weight. Right. So now that she had her mission from God, uh, at the age of 17, she sprung into action and let her imaginary voices guide her every act. Good. What could go wrong? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, one of the first things they said, you because this is this is Christianity. They're like, you got to stop eating because like, fuck, God hates when you fucking eat. I, We've talked oh, about yeah. this. God hates it, dude. Like, He's very and, upset. Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to suffer in life. None's supposed to have a good time. Well said. So good point. Yeah, so Joan was anorexic uh, because she just didn't eat, and this was she didn't eat enough food where she actually did not have her period. Wow, because oh, she didn't have damn. enough nutrients in her Jeez. body to have her period. I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, I was actually something came to my attention recently that a plus size model said she was suffering from anorexia. Huh. Have you seen this, Tess Holiday? I, I know Tess Holiday. She says she, she has come out saying that she's suffering from anorexia. I'm not even kidding. I don't know how that she's works. plus size, though? I don't, I don't know. She's extremely plus size. She she thinks that she's been too hard on herself and that she should be bigger. Oh. I I can't justify or Maybe make, she's make sense of it. I'm That's just saying, it. when you're not having your period and you're the size of a celery... <laughs> That's anorexia. That's anorexia. Yeah. But not when you're on the cover of Esquire for being the first good year on the oh. cover of X- Esquire. <laughs> That's eating disorder. Yeah. Now, God bless her for uh, up until that uh, statement. Hey, let's fat that chicks way. are awesome. I love fat chicks. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no hate. Chicks. I'm just saying, you know, let's let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> All right. Shouts to the fat chicks. All righty. So we got this crazy girl. She wants crazy. to crown the dolphin. Let her do it, man. Yeah. And she's not having her period. She's not eating. But now, how is this poor, illiterate girl going to get troops to like escort her to the king and get enough clout to manage such a task. Start an OnlyFans. Oh, a quirky personality. Sell job. bath water. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're all kind of right. <laughs> oh no. Nice. So, 
So for I mean she's she's underage, so she can't set up a OnlyFans. So she goes to her godfather and she's like, Hey, I gotta Send go only to OnlyFans up for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I-, I have to go to the local garrison and I need to meet the commander and we need to get some troops. So the commander of this local garrison was a guy named Robert Baldicott, um, who was a notorious raper and shitbag. Jeez. Raper. It's rough. Yeah. And he was on their team, <laughs> her team. So, you um, a rapist in her team. It was kind of interesting because a lot of people were like, wow, Joan got away with her virginity after meeting this dude because uh, he just was a rapey man. He just did it. Yeah. Good times. Um, but he was like, no, fuck you. You're an idiot. I don't care. Like, not I'm rapey, not giving yeah. you any troops. It's like, who the fuck are you? Um, but she hung around the garrison for a little bit, and more and more soldiers started to believe her magical cause Ooh. and started to rally behind her. How bored were they? I mean, these are soldiers, so they're probably just looking at her awesome rack and be like, oh, I, I she has her. no awesome rack. She did have an awesome rack, and there are Ooh. primary sources oh? for her. Oh, awesome really? Rack. Unless she was dying of hunger. That's what well, makes the rack you know. awesome. Yeah, like, wow! Well, I can't believe a little more. I can't believe you've been able Pops to do like, more. Like swollen eggplants. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so yeah, there were primary sources of of, uh, of her nice rack. But when you see modern depictions of Joan of Arc, uh, she's usually portrayed along that like Aryan line of tall, blonde, blue eyes. Is that not the case? But it, no, no. I thought she had like black hair or some shit and like knight's armor. Yeah, in reality, she was short. Uh, had dark hair and big. Uh, so like a like Hell a yeah. proto Danny DeVito. Yeah, with bigger tits. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No comment. And no comment. This yeah. is working. <laughs> so during this time in the garrison, she performed various miracles. You know, healing some dude uh, by basically telling him to get rid of his mistress, and somehow he got magically better. <laughs> Standard oh, fit. Oh, wow. <laughs> All, the, all his headaches are gone now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop banging that broad. Jeez. So she goes back to this Robert guy, and he's like, now she's got all these dudes behind her, behind her like, look, they all believe me. Like, you got to give me troops. It's God's will. Uh-oh. And this, Uh-oh. And this, time, and this time, he's like, the prophecies are true. You must be the chosen one. What? I love the Matrix. I'm a big fan of that film. Let's go on, yeah. I'm a big fan of the Wachowski sisters. Very strange that they decided to do that to together. Both do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hold hands and get their cocks cut off at the same Neo time. Neo is an anagram but, for the one. Or one. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, either way, I'm just really happy that the Matrix exists. I'm all about the Matrix Reloaded, dude. That's the best shut, one. You I shut like the fuck up. You shut the warm mouth immediately. <laughs> you ever wonder if this is the Matrix? What's that? You ever wonder if you're living in the Matrix? I think about it all the time. Oh, yeah. And it's because I saw that film in 1999. Oh. Not to get off topic, but I was thinking about this other day. It's kind of like, it's a little grim. I was like, if you kill yourself, like, what if you just, like, restart, like, two weeks in the past? Yeah, your last checkpoint? Your last checkpoint. Like, there's, like, some shit like that. You have but but no one knows, because if you kill yourself, no one really knows. Yeah. So do you have to kill yourself to achieve that? Or do no, old you, people you, just keep dying? I mean, you, <laughs> you, you wake up two weeks in the past. Do you even know if you killed yourself or not? That's torture if you're old. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, imagine. Being... I shit my pants again today. Well, I like to think that you're we're right. all living in, like, the yeah. life flashing before your eyes. You know what I mean? Like, you, you die. Oh, that too. And I was your like, entire that. life flashes before your eyes, including the life flashing before your eyes. So you're just constantly reliving everything in, like, microseconds before your, like, original body dies. I would much rather watch YouTube ads. <laughs> oh, yeah. So she, this is the chosen one. She's basically Neo. And this guy's like, yeah, I'm going to give you troops, dude. So... He gives her some knights, and she sets out to meet Charles the Seventh at the castle of Chinchon, which is a famous steakhouse. Yeah, famous. Wow, steakhouse. there's a lot. Yeah, right next episode. Yeah, I'm getting steakhouse. real hungry now. Listen to this. We're gonna order some steaks Blue from a famous steakhouse after this. Charles Seventh, yeah. Benny. Hines. We're gonna go. Yeah, Charles Seven Outback. <laughs> so, in order to get to the to the Dauphin, uh, she would it would take her straight through Burgundian territory. You know the rapers. So this is where Joan started her iconic cross-dressing as a man. Don't get raped. Don't get raped. Yeah, don't get raped. So 
Joan is sometimes seen as a hero for cross-dressers or trans people um, because of the whole gender-breaking thing going on. Yeah, but on. those same people hate God and anything else associated with the church, so... I never really understand why those people like go to church, because uh, God hates yeah, you. They, he... God hates you. <laughs> God, God hates, hates most people. He hates us, definitely us on the show. Um, what's the point of idols if it's just hearsay? Yeah, I'll worship a golden ox. Give me. <laughs> but okay so yes she did dress like a man and there were reasons why she did but i want to make this point clear there was no such thing as female armor in the medieval I, or renaissance i feel time. like that's true with clothes in general if you're a poor fuck you just have the unisex rag it's bag time yeah burlap oh i mean they had fashion back then but you're not gonna have armor right i mean it was if you were one of the one of the rare women that actually fought during that whole time period, guess what? You dress like a man. Yeah, dude armor is just <laughs> unisex, kind of. Exactly. And it's... Those guys were raping each other anyway. Oh, yeah. So you're just lowering the chances a little. Yeah. Right. They're uh, always seeing... I, wa- I, I wonder if that guy has a pussy. That pussy. I wonder. That boy Yeah, pussy. dude. Yeah. And also... Like the you answer's think- always yes. There's a lot. There's sick fucks out. I mean, they know, if rape is not cool. No, raping is not. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks, Mike. Rape is not cool. <laughs> but but also, put that at the top about, of the episode. If you if you think about female soldiers today, you don't see them wearing camo skirts. They should, but yeah, like they might get a lot. They can wear they want. Right? <laughs> yeah. But to go off a little bit more on women armor, if you play a pl- fantasy game or anything, and you see a breastplate. With a woman wearing, and she's got the big ass donga jonga there, There's, there's, right. there, in in metal. There, there's a logistical right? problem with that. Yes. So the whole point of armor is whenever someone strikes at you with a sword, right. it's supposed to glance off a w- of the like armor. to the That's left why it's or like right. Rounded. Yeah. But if you have to the left or the if right, you have like a titty enclosure that kind of ups the odds of the sword thrust glancing into your throat. Yeah, or into your chest. Or, or, yeah, I mean, if it, that, if that it hits the middle, power, it'll go through your stomach. Yeah, that much power. Yeah. You guys have to ruin everything. A little bit. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> you can still jerk what, what, off my, to it. My dead, what's that game called? Dead or Alive? Fucking... There's no armor oh, in Oh, the that, volleyball game? game? Yeah, yeah. You guys are ruining my Dead or Alive There's no fantasy. armor in there. They were bikinis in that. Wasn't there a medieval chick in there? Oh, no, I'm thinking of Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur. Yeah. 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 So fatita. Sorry. I used to... <laughs> I just really like Valdo. He br- puts my mind in dirty yeah. places. Although All the sex appeal is just that, funneled Valdo? to Valdo. I don't remember who that is. Who the he's hell the is that? He's a man who wears bondage, and he's Edward Scissorhands, <laughs> and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> so so she makes it through the Burgundian te- uh, territory <laughs> with these troops, and she arrives at the castle where the uh, Dauphin is, and the draw br- drawbridge is up. So the guard lowers the drawbridge, and he cat called down to her. Oh no! And uh, yeah, so he said, "If it isn't the maid, Jadenu, which means uh, I deny God. Um, if if I had her for a night, she wouldn't remain remain a maid." Long winded cat calls oh. back then. Yeah. So Joan replied back, "Ha! In God's name, you deny him when you're so close to death." Ooh. The oh. counter cat call. That's a rare and effective move. And within an hour, the guard tripped over the ramparts and fell to his death into the moat. Whoa, isn't that cool? Yeah, Mr. Magoo. Miracles. Chosen one. I do enjoy miracles. Was it a miracle? That's pretty that embarrassing, guy. too. Like, an embarrassing way to go out. Like, I was an asshole. <laughs> I, I can just imagine, <laughs> like, Joan dumb. of Arc, like, <laughs> like, sneaking around the moat, just like, like, Kareem Abdul Jabbaring, like, banana peels up on. To the, uh, you know what I mean? Just like God, please let one of these work. <laughs> so Charles the Seventh heard that she was coming, decided to put her divine sight to test. Oh, she's got this now, apparently. So, well, yeah, I mean, she's coming from God, so she knows everything. Uh, so he dressed up as one of his nobles in his court and pretended to be one of them, so like one of the courtiers. Hmm. And uh, he told this courtier named Bluebeard. Uh, to dress up as him. He's like, you be the king, I'm going to be you. Uh, they all switch a She's going to come in and be like, goofed you, and then you put it up on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. So she comes in, and she looks at Bluebeard, who's dressed as a king, and he's like, you're not the, you're not the king. Oh. And spun around, 
and found costume Charles and was like, you are the rightful king of France. Oh, and they're all like, how did you know? That's what you get. And, and she's you like, shop for your disguises cl- at like spirit of Halloween. Well, I think I think Joan, as crazy as she is, she was into collecting sports cards, which were all of royalty at the time. Yeah. I've been looking at your picture for years, idiot. <laughs> there you go. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So this was so shocking. Oh, my God. You got the king. Charles was so impressed. He's like, all right, how about if you're for real? How about you take back the city of Orleans? It's been under siege for like almost a year now. If God's really on your side, you're going to go fucking take that city back. But I could really use a po' boy. <laughs> God damn, yeah, I love yeah. those. Hmm. Me too. I'm kind of jealous, Co. You're going to go to po' boy town. I Put am. Shrimp in your mouth. Fuck, oh. yes. Cajun chicken, oh, too. God damn. Fuck I'm going to die. Yeah, dude. Only it. shrimps. Muscles. Yeah. Oh, I had a po' boy down in Savannah. Oh. Oyster. What? Oh, yeah, baby girl. Fried oyster bitch boy. Oh, hell yeah. Saga. <laughs> so he's like, first, I need to get approval from the church. Because like, if I'm going to send you on this godly mission, church has to be cool with you. I'm going to want to ask God. Yeah, God, why is you're God? Because yeah. you're coming from God. God, I go, what? Double yeah, check. Let me see. Need Let's see what the boss says. You're going to need to sign off on this one. So uh, Joan was examined by the clergy. So that meant the archbishop and two of the bishops got a free peep show because they stripped her nude. And they're like, oh, that naked 17-year-old girl, uh, you ever have sex before? She's like, nah, I'm a virgin. And they're like, good, save that pussy for God. He needs to fucking slam that shit. He does. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I don't know. They just like looked at her naked and then uh, went back and administered some Holy Spirit into their sock. Next to their bedside table. Which is rough because, you know, socks were not soft. Sounds like then. the church. Oh, yeah. Burlap. Burlap. Sheepskin. Wasn't they, or were they lambskin? Oh, they, they put it right back on the foot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like today no. where we have a, a hamper nope. that we can <laughs> attempt to throw it yeah. into. You get one sock. Natural lotion, Tom. <laughs> so Joan was given a new suit of armor, a sword, and a banner, which was the banner was the Trinity flanked by two angels. And a scroll beneath it saying "De par le roi de ciel," which means "the party of the king of heaven." That's pretty too bad. many ofs. Mm. Yeah, they run on sentence a little bit. Mm. So now we often think when you think of Joan of Arc, you think of like this almost like Legolas from Lord of the Rings with Ooh, tits, good. like fighting and like yeah. you know, oh yeah, I'm gonna kill everyone. Right now, this was not the case because. Um, if you remember, she was going up against knights, and knights were men that had trained since they were a boy to kill you. Right. Not a girl yelling at grass in the <laughs> yeah. backyard, eating mushrooms, and uh, pretending that... Um, what else is... Not she's crazy. She's the chosen one, Tom. Don't fucking Yeah, she's the, the story. chosen. Merlin told her that she's yeah. going to take back France. I'll admit, I got a little distracted on my last thought. That's what we're talking about. She's the chosen one. Right. I take it all back. I love the Matrix. Continue, <laughs> Travis. So she's gonna go. She's going up these professional killers that have trained since they were like these, are like the type of like kids that were into like WWF when you're kids, like picked apart fucking squirrels while they were oh, alive. Yeah, good issue. Yeah, like yeah. night, like real serial yeah, yeah, they, killer. They, they make a people. dollar to yeah. Jones, you know, eighty three cents. Yeah, she got God on her side. So with throughout all the campaigns, I'm going to mention Joan never killed a man with her own hands. Although, admittedly, she did kill a bunch of people through her own incompetence, uh, which we're going to get awesome. into. But the whole time when she was in battle, she just carried her banner, which was kind of like a rally point for all these horny troops. Right, right. Screaming like, oh, I know, Kung Fu. And everyone's <laughs> like, what? What's, That's, kung, what's <laughs> kung Fu? It's got to be the chosen one. This is crazy. This is crazy stuff. She was simping before it was even a thing. She had all these dudes doing this shit for her. She just had us hold the thing, hold I'm, the flag. Yeah. I mean, we're going to go into what she's the saint of, but one of the things they didn't mention, she should be the saint of OnlyFans. I, I think you're right. The patron saint of blue ball penises. <laughs> mm, that sounds about right. So the Battle of Orleans. So basically, the British were pressing down into France from the north, and the French were, hold, was holding, the, they were holding the city of Orleans. Um, like I said, the British had been sieging this city for about a year. The, the French citizens in the city were starving. The commanders were worn down. 
And the French were actually making preparations to surrender, as they do best. It's like, give it up. Okay. In fact, Orleans was so important that strategically, if if they were to to um, take the city or surrender the city, Charles was getting ready to exile himself to Scotland and just let the British take the country. Damn. <laughs> I love this concept of self-exile. Like, just call it a vacation. You, you, yeah, yeah permanent vacation. B&B, kayak. It's not permanent, Mike. It's just open-ended. You know, this you're, war you're thing is really, back, right? really <laughs> bothering me, and I would say this. Maybe I'll go to Thailand and see what these lady boys oh, are yeah, all man. about. Damn. You travel to Thailand, everyone's a blue beard there. You know Great I mean? seafood. <laughs> yeah. You can get a nice motorbike down there. Yeah, $40 wow. a day for a Yamaha. Nice yeah, you motorbike, had a, lot of, too. a lot of good time down there. So Charles had nothing to lose by sending Joan. Again, this is very unorthodox. Women didn't, like, fight in the army or anything. And he gave her a simple task of just resupplying the troops and the citizens of Orleans. So she shows up. She meets this commander named D- um Dunnuis, who was like, all right, I know you're magical. <laughs> like, tell me, tell me something cool. Which way is the wind going to blow tomorrow? What and, an and uncreative she, she, fuck. He could be <laughs> like, bitch, give me like the, the Powerball numbers or who's going to win the Super Bowl. But he's just like, how about a not even a seven day forecast? How about a one day forecast? And, and on top of which, it's every Scantron. Every Scantron kid in the United States school system yeah. always answers C. Yeah. When you don't know, you answer C. So you give options like that. How about something else? What do, what do I have in my pocket? That would be that would be more. <laughs> the trick nowadays. Like a simple David well, Blaine. You have, like, four, you have four answers, like Northwest. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, can, you can't be no multiple yeah. choice. Multiple choice miracles don't work. Yeah. They never have. So that's what I'm saying. Doing something easy. What do I have in my pocket? Yeah. I don't know. You have a... A fucking tiny statue of a rabbit. Right. The, the, the <laughs> trick nowadays, Tom, is to always answer B, because there might be a true or false in those multiple choice questions. Oh, yeah. And if you answer C for that, you're just going to forfeit points. Cody, I dropped out of school, and I'm not going back. So thank you <laughs> for the listener's sake, but I'm oh, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That wasn't for you. <laughs> so Joan picks the right Scantron answer, and this guy's like, whoa, you were really sent by God. <laughs> that's a miracle. And when I say miracle, there's an asterisk yeah. here because like, it's a miracle. Like, cause she becomes a saint. Like they look back at this, like you picked the right way to win. Win. This is a canonization. Which way was it going? Yes. Miracle. Oh, pick and go <laughs> so win. One four. Wait, which, wh- which way was it going? I don't know. I didn't write. Let's say it doesn't matter. I need to know. All right. I'll let you, I'll it doesn't matter. West. It was weast. weast. Check back in with me tomorrow. I think, I think it's going East tomorrow. Okay. Check back in with me. Suck on my Get me in the Catholic decide. Church, okay? I can do a lot of good there. I can do a lot of good. You could. You could be a priest. I get my Twitter account. Can already, use it. There's yeah. already Saint Thomas. You got to be like there, Saint Lemon. I'll be Saint Charles Lemon. Saint I Charles keep Lemon. telling you, that's my new name. So Joan's first battle was the Battle of Saint Loop. Um, so basically, the British had set up a siege encampment uh, to the north of Orleans. And it was at a monastery called St. Loop. And Joan was stoked. She's like, hell yeah, battle. She go <laughs> grabs her. She grabs her banner, which is not a weapon to hold. And she gallops off towards the battle, which was already underway. Right. It's 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 a um, a banner, by the way, is basically just a analog hashtag. <laughs> yeah. Just she's, like, oh, wow, scared. that's oh, a good, good analogy. She's battlefield color guard. That's cool. Imagine going into a fight and like. You it's instead of not even bringing a knife to a gunfight, you just bring the hashtag stop Asian hate and they're like, see what happens, see what happens. Oh, you're gonna win. win, yeah. The guy could go plastic knife to save bullets. <laughs> it's bad for the so by the time though. she by the time she gets to this mon- monastery, the British were already trounced. Uh, the French had oh. beat, beat them. Now, this is a woman that can predict what where, like, find the king, she can predict the winds. A bunch of British, because they they were held up in this monastery. A bunch of British just dressed up as British as uh, the monks. They put mm. on the robes, right? Oh. And they walked right out of the building in front of Joan of Arc. Yes, who's like, oh, those are, these are men of God. 
wait, don't touch him. And they also can't speak. So <laughs> yeah. uh, don't ask him anything. You won't be able to find out. They're just going to go now. <laughs> They're just on their way. These merry men who will save us from certain hell. So this omnipotent Joan of Arc misses this. And uh, the remaining English troops that survived the attack fled to the fort of St. Augustine. And she was about to mount her horse and like Hot. get ready to go the get ready yeah mounted dog donkey show <laughs> with a horse <laughs> with a horse yeah this is really one of our grosser episodes if yeah, you really tell uh, these patreon.com tally these up. Cast. 13 hours in a car to this shit let's the go women are gonna love this episode she's gonna, they're gonna love they're it they're gonna love this one so she's about to mount her horse and charge after these english that are fleeing along with the monks that just walked underneath her nose and she steps on a caltrip oh fuck how's that well a caltrip is basically a, a battlefield lego <laughs> it's a very good, it's a very pointy thing you put on the ground and either your horse will step on it or you'll step on Ooh. it and it will fuck your and the caltrip is like made in such a way it's like four spikes that like kind of Imagine if you whittled a three-sided pyramid down so it was just spikes on each corner. So uh, a spike is a, always pointing up. A, another common name for them was crow's feet. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. The, I didn't know that one. Yeah, they threw them out. It's because it looks like crow's it, feet. Yeah. It just looks yeah. Like, bird, like if you took a... Okay. You took, or any bird. It, it, yeah, if it was crow's feet leg, doing a yeah, tiptoe. Put a crow's like, foot oh. out there. Yeah. So she steps on this, and then she's like, well, I can't go. Yeah, fuck this. battle. So she goes back to Orleans, the, behind the city wall, walls, to recover. And uh, the French captains were like, this isn't really going well because we attacked this one place and they all ran back to the other place. We should probably just, like, do the French thing and, like, call for reinforcements and give yeah, up. Yeah, the French thing. Yeah. Joan is like, fuck that. We are going to attack tomorrow. We're attacking Torles, <laughs> which is another British Alp. Toilets? On the Tortellinis. Yeah. So the next morning, she, I don't know if it's all right. She's fine. That's good. Holy. She sets out to battle right off the bat. She gets hit right above her left titty with an arrow. But she keeps on fighting, waving that flag. Nice. Wait, is it like just above the left titty, your heart? It's probably above that left titty. Like oh, car bone? Oh, okay. So okay. probably s- skid off into her, like her shoulder. <laughs> Right. Area. Look, we, we we all know that women can take more pain than men. It's true. Yeah, it's yeah. true. This is why I've actually, I'm starting a movement. Me and Stephen Molyneux, we've been talking. <laughs> oh, and we God. want to, uh, you know, like it's a common courtesy when you're walking with your loved one, your your wife, your girlfriend, that um, the man is towards the street side on right. the sidewalk, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm willing to wager that if we reverse this, a woman could take getting hit by a car easier than a man, and a man could get the adrenaline and lift the car or call the police because the man knows the police's phone number. <laughs> as, long, as long as they're as long as they're white, right? So if you <laughs> if you keep the woman on the wow. outside, there's a higher higher survival rate for both people. <laughs> All right, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to preserve wow. yeah, I guess what so. I've got going on. I always Look make Gabby walk basically science. in the street. Tom, and, didn't didn't you say Ben Shapiro is going to be on the show soon? Well. So look, I a few episodes ago, yeah, he wanted to roast George Floyd. I said it was a bad idea. Oh, um, he's because it's not good. Like that's tone no. deaf, totally tone yeah. deaf. Um, so Stephen Mall and you and I are talking now. I'm done with Ben Shapiro. He oh, okay. he tried to, he tried to sell me on some like a uh, kosher protein powder. Stilts. Um, but Tom, yeah. you want to hear another miracle, dog? What's you that? like miracles? Mm-hmm. I tell. You went well, to Catholic school. I did. I'm Jewish, but my I was raised Catholic. Oh, wow. yeah. So um, I can go to I can go to birthright and start the crusades all over again for funsy onesies. <laughs> That's a good true point. Um, but you know, probably more saints than I do. I don't. I was a Presbyterian. We didn't believe in that shit. Ah, yeah. Uh, and then I. Well, denounced, you should. It's fun. I denounced God. But uh, playing cards. anyway, let's talk about another miracle. This is a really like amazing. Miracles. Mm-hmm. So during the battle, she's like she's still recovering. She just got shot with an arrow above oh. her titty. Ouch. So she's talking to the Duke of Elicon. I think that's how it's pronounced. Right. Some Duke who's like, they're standing on the hill watching the battle take place. Right. She whispers to the Duke. He's like, you should probably move. You should get out of there. you like ASMR. And then, yeah. And then he's like, why? She's like, a cannonball is going to hit right there where you're standing. It's like, 
She's like, okay. Why are like, you All right, he moves. He takes a few steps <laughs> over. But he had two knights guarding him. Didn't tell the knights. She didn't tell the knights. Fuck the knights. And somehow a cannonball <laughs> hits this 12-pound red-hot iron. Blast these two knights. Wow. Duke was saved. What a miracle. We saved royalty. <laughs> we did it, boys. The ones that need if you knew... If you knew the cannonball was happening, why weren't you just like, yo, guys, just like, come hey, on. all of you people, come <laughs> yeah. on. Set up like You a, too. I don't know your yeah. names. Just get out of the way. Set up like yeah. a Flora's wet sign or something so no one gets hurt. <laughs> it's obviously a conspiracy theory. You're, you're wow, going conspiracy look, with this I think one? So why, why would she just whisper to the Duke and not her team? Hey, hey those guys, they're mean to me. Exactly. Fuck I can em. see it. Conspiracy. So the battle was turning it. This whole battle, she started was turning against her own side the french were losing so they sounded the horn um to retreat from this outpost joan disobeyed the retreat orders and pressed forward with her troops uh this push cost a lot of lives but um the it was able to push the british back and end the siege of orleans so after a year, a year and a half, or like a year, about a half year, <laughs> All right. some years, it was a half a year, about a half a about year, a half, year. Ahead, half a year of siege, um, it ended in nine days after Joan showed up. So, of course, uh, what a Spooky. miracle. Joan won it. Yeah, miracle number three. that fucking flag. Yeah. And uh, also, she's making a name for herself. The British are like... What is it? This shows up. Uh, she's like, make it win. Uh, not her. Must be a witch. Oh, ah. everyone else wants to retreat. She's like, let's charge them. Well, it, she won. Sure, he won. She yeah. she did her job. She's a miracle worker now. But now she's uh, a witch because she's fucking badass. Yeah. So what are, what are her three miracles now? So it's it's guessing right. Guessing right. It's killing two men. Uh, um, as opposed by to guessing three. right. Yeah. Uh, by guessing right, and then getting there, getting at there a certain time. Yeah, miracles, all of them. Miracle. There's more too, guys. Every time I show up to an AMC movie theater and I get there a little late, but just as the movie's starting, miracle. you're a third of the way to becoming a saint. So Almost there. So guys, she just needs to do her original task now. Because remember, the king was like, "Take back Orleans," and she did it. So now she just got a crown the um donkey, donkey brain yeah. Yeah, yeah donkey boy so she heads back to notre dame de rem and she crowns charles the seventh during a coronation ceremony and that's it she's done that's in a general arc that's it well she she finished what she's supposed to do pack the bags amazing. see you later joe right now you know we all have seen those bands where it's like guys you're talking about how much high school sucks and now you're 45. And right. You're still singing the same songs. Like Blink 182. Yeah. Some shit. You did what you were supposed to do. You just stop. You already hit your. You could ride that money out. You, you did it. Right. Joan was much like those bands. Even though she had completed the task that was set before oh, her by no. God, she was like, I need to keep going. And the next thing was to take back Paris, which was. Um, controlled by the Burgundians. Oh, hmm. Okay, so her own people. Yeah. So she returns to Charles. She's like, we need to start rallying troops because, like, we got to take back Paris. And Charles, this fat fuck who's, like, stuffing his face, is like, whoa, whoa, John, I love your enthusiasm here, but uh, I don't have enough money to hire new troops. I yeah. need to eat more pasta. Is that what French Yeah, is? sometimes. Technically, is lasagna French? Yes. I've had a... I've had a bread pudding before is that french that no. sounds really good bread pudding uh, it's it gets uh i had one with walnuts and one without and i don't know if it's french to this day the french do very good puff yeah pastry. croissants i heard that they know how to rape an egg <laughs> are they good at, you know they invented hot pockets it's true hope okay exactly <laughs> Is it fucking croissant with pepperoni and cheese and stuff? Really is. Polio string ah! cheese. Polio string cheese. That's where I'm going after this. 7 Eleven, get some hot pockets. I thought we were going to a steakhouse. Ah! We are, we're going to Benny Chris Seven. Oh, we're going, yeah, Benny Johnna's. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> get some fucking stock. So for the next nine months, uh, Joan led battle after battle and, you know, waving her flag around. Um, now, I'm not going to go into each one, but there were some questionable things that I, along the way, that. 
I want to bring up. This is Rose Mortimer. Yeah. So the first thing was being very pick and choosy about when to rest on Christian holy days. So famously, she stopped fight the fighting. She was like going to lead this attack on Ascension Day. And she was like, I'm not going to fight on any holy days because it's a day of rest. She's a very godly what person. Is Ascension Day? Is that like Easter or Good Friday? Sunday? Uh, I think it's like a few days after Easter, isn't it? That would make sense. Ascension Day? Three days, right? Yeah. Um, Ascent- No, it's 40 days after Easter. Right. Yeah. I love how the Jew knows so this. she's like... Well, yeah, I mean, you got to make sure he's in the ground. <laughs> this guy's still here. So she's like, I'm not going to fight on the day that Jeebus flew up to heaven. This is not right to do. Um, but the thing was, was she was winning at that point. She was like, all right, we'll take a rest. A few months later, during the feast of the nativity of the Virgin, when she wow. was losing, she launched a sneak attack. On oh, the good. She's a George Washington. Nice. Yeah. Well, she's losing. She's just de- it's a day of rest. Strategic yeah. right there. I like that. Yeah. When in Rome. They're resting. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking fair game. <laughs> I guess God saw that one attack because she took an arrow through the thigh. Oh, wow. Okay. Thick thighs save lives. Thought, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dummy yeah. thick but, thighs, maybe. Probably skinny yeah. thighs. She had skinny thighs. Skinny yeah. thighs, yeah. She had those little baby knees. The ones Whoa. that don't even pass as hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Went right through. Duh. Yeah. Although... It was seen that Joan would weep, weep over the dead of her, over the dead and dying of her enemies, you know, because she didn't like the loss of life. She'd be like, oh, English boy, I'm sorry that you're dead. <laughs> Stop stabbing me. You. Yeah. Um, she happened to capture a Burgundian sympathizer at Langny, which was right after she baptized a dead baby and brought it back to life, which was another miracle. That's, pretty that's, that's a good one. So you'll. You only need three to be canonized, so I don't know why they counted wind. She's, you know, she's up to four now. She's she's working on her second hat oh. trick. Yeah, S- she's like the Wayne women. Gretzky of saints. Strong women, parallel parks, car. <laughs> Miracle, she a baby, back to life. So back, yeah, yeah. She's just resting. resting. Baby was just resting. Uh, yeah, well, it said it, the baby was like black and dead, she and she like it. baptized it and was like, "Oh hell yeah, give me hot dogs." It was just covered in shit. This is yeah. a messy baby. <laughs> it needed a baby. washing. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a good baptism. So so she captured this Burgundian sympathizer. And now back in the day, this is important. When you were, if you were rich, if you were seen in flashy armor, the typical thing was not to, if, if you could help it, not to kill that person on the battlefield, but to capture them and trade them for ransom or trade them for another troop that you lost on the in exchange. Now, there were certain codes, chivalric codes, to protect these noble POWs from mistreatment. They're like, you have my word, sir. That's oh, shit. Oh, Monty yeah. Python shit. Yeah. So Joan had this dude named Franquette <laughs> Aris. De Aris? Franquette? Franquette de Aris. De Aris. I'm pretty sure they have a quiche named after him. Yeah, it sounds delicious. Like a type of crepe. Yeah, they, they it's a quiche with cheese and, and the mushrooms and all the regular stuff, Ew, but they leave toothpicks gross. in it. So she was going to exchange this guy for another dude, like on her team, but then she found out that the guy died and she couldn't do the trade. So she put this dude up to trial for 15 days, probably tortured, and because he confessed to murder, for being a murderer, a thief, and a traitor, and then beheaded him. Good. She didn't behead him. Someone else did. Uh, of course. course. Yeah. Well, it's paperwork. It's paperwork. paperwork. Yeah, she you know, didn't kill anyone. Shit rolls right. downhill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Joan's luck was about to run out, because during a raid on an English Burgundian encampment during Compagnie, or near Compagnie, uh, on May 23rd, 1430, Joan was captured. Uh-oh. And uh, given the fact that she liked to execute her own prisoners, it was not looking good. Uh-oh. Mm. Joan was held for six months in the fortress of Beaulieu. Uh, the English and Burgundians thought that she would fetch a high price for ransom because she was in fancy armor, and they obviously knew who she was. She was... The lady household fight. name, right? Oh, there's yeah. only one of you, but her savior, the man, the crown, the person that she crowned king, instructed by God, Charles the Seventh, 
refused to pay ransom. Just oh. didn't acknowledge any of the letters. I was thinking of going to Disney with the kids. And that's going to tap into my cotton candy money, bitch. Hey, that's some <laughs> Funnel cake is you expensive. Make king. Yeah. Does shit yeah. I love Space Mountain as much as I love The Matrix. I can't pass up this holiday. I've been very stressed out. I have I told the kids. N- None of the other dukes or noblemen that had followed her behind battle played her ransom either. She right. Well, she was How annoying. Spicy was this her is, bail? I don't know the exact number, but it was, up there. it was put out there, and no one was like. Everyone was like, "Nah." I know what it was. Eight dollars USD. Wow. <laughs> Today's money. So whatever that is back then, you can't even get a combo deal for that. Look, I mean, we all have been drunk. there. We all have been there. We've all been drunk with someone who oh, was man. like, dude, I love you. And you're like, yeah, you too. And then the next day you go, I hate that person. Yeah. I don't like, can I get a ride to the airport? You're just like, no, yeah. <laughs> I can't drive. Yeah, exactly. So if they were to get kidnapped and the kidnappers were requesting $8 in Bitcoin, which is obviously moving up and down so weird. rapidly. Uh, ter- yeah. Weird, weird denomination. Uh, no would be the answer. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can stay in there. Um, <laughs> and when you die, uh, we'll forget all about this. Oh, well. Get you in the dust pan. Like, I made you fucking king. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So because Joan was it's fucked up, somewhat seen as like a knight, sort of. She oh she she directed troops. So she was held under the chivalric code that I mentioned. There was oh, honor and dignity, okay. right? So Joan was not tortured or raped. Or anything, she was just held in a guard, like under guard, in a seventy-foot tower. Right, she had a nice, nice little fucking pent suite up in this okay, tower. Okay, cool, cool, cool. She's just like, all right. Now, if you haven't forgotten, this woman hears voices. So, some of the angels and saints that were talking to her was like, "Yo, you have to escape. You have to get out of here because." You need to kick the English out. You can't kick the English out of your up in this stupid ass tower, right? And so, from what I understand, uh, the top of towers, the voices get louder. You get better yeah. reception well, you're closer up there. to the yeah. big man. You're and the quiet. It's so serene. Yeah, the voices just come right through. So Joan was like, "All right, I gotta get out." She threw herself out of the seventh yeah, story and window. Self defenestration. <laughs> That's badass. Yeah, she lived too. So somehow she survived. She was completely Uh, fucked up and was immediately recaptured. So didn't see that one coming. Yeah, I I could see. I didn't see that at all. Perhaps a leg or two breaking. And I mean, this is an Assassin's Creed. There's no hay. Oh, no. She did. Well, if they just put the hay under me. Where did she think she was going to like go when she jumped? (laughs) She thought she was going to fall upward, Mike. Damn. Yeah, that's what that's the first lie you ever learn in life. Religion. Right. We're going to do this right Deep. now. If you believe. See that? She was hearing voices in her head. Window. No, I'm just kidding. Look, we don't know. We don't know any of this. Well, There's a great, I'm, there, it, there could very well be the great God. It's not our business. Are you hearing voices that say jump out the window? You right. You need yourself. to be. You're, you're, you've you're, obviously been <laughs> undiagnosed with some kind of mental <laughs> yeah. illness, but that doesn't that doesn't speak to whether God exists. What if she really did hear them? Well, she did hear them in her little they, they just lied brain, to her. In yeah. her little nuthead. So the angels <laughs> angels were saying, like, jump out the tower. There's a purple mattress underneath you. And then, like, the fucking demons downstairs yoinked it away at the last yeah, second. Don't. Yeah, put a sleepy uh, mattress. I was going to say a, a Casper mattress topper. Oh, they really those tricked are thin. Yeah. Those are it's thin. just the futon. topper. Just the futon. So the English really hated this woman. Remember, she'd been, like, a rallying point for getting more troops that Charles couldn't afford and really wanted her dead. And the best way to do that was to have the wonderful church uh, direct a trial for her. So they were like, let's try this bitch for witchcraft. Joan was not tried as a political prisoner or a traitor, but as a heretic. Loophole. Yeah. Does that mean witch? Kind kind of heretic just means a defector from the church. Yeah. So, it makes sense too. We're all heretics because here. if if you have a bunch of English religious men doing the trial, and she's hearing God, yeah, they're gonna go. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, you're I mean, a sick sad. woman. You're a sick woman, and there's only one co- yeah. cause for the. Uh, there's only one. Why am I blanking? No words. Thirteen, 13 hours, hours in a car. Satan. There's only one cure. Why couldn't I think of the word cure? Thirteen hours. I'm really thin. 
really thick. Robert Smith. There's only one Robert, Robert Smith, Smith to this. <laughs> That's true. I was saying the same thing, Robert Smith. Yeah. Leave all that in, Zwick. I'm an embarrassment to everyone. Me too. So as the Catholic Church do, <laughs> there was no specific <laughs> charges against her at the beginning of the Good. trial. The church kind of just winged it and came up with them as they went along. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's just a roast, uh, isn't it? If they're just like, yeah, ah, you smell funny, bitch. Ah, <laughs> uh, you we'll teeth crooked, it out. bitch. Yeah. Let the record show that this bitch's teeth are crooked and she's rather stinky. Noted. <laughs> so the bitches, <laughs> the bishop, uh, the bishishish, the bishop of Beauvais, Pierre, and his name was Pierre Cognon, was the man that really wanted to preside over this trial. He had already made up the fact that she was a heretic. You know, it was a kangaroo Spreading court. Gossip. Kangaroo it's court. Before it's kangaroos existed. I love that term. I was part of a kangaroo court once. It was weird. What? Kangaroo court is just like a court where it, like, it just kind of happens to happen, right? And like, I Yeah, but how are you I part remember of I got a parking ticket, and the parking ticket, not a... Not, it wasn't a parking ticket. It was my my registration had lapsed, and I got a ticket from the officer that said, "Show up to your court date," even though I didn't have one. So I showed up to the day on the <laughs> ticket, and literally the judge was just like, "Oh no, I'm sorry," and he literally had me go through the motions of court just to say not guilty. Like it wow. was so fucking wow. strange, and like I that's how I know that's how I came to know of the term kangaroo court. Did they say, did the judge say that? Did he no, he didn't. He was hat? just like he bounced around. Literally, the like I had to sit there for and watch bay, people bay. that like you know battered wives like get sentenced, and then it was my turn. And then literally, the judge was just like, "Oh, I heard you already did all your paper. Your public defender you've never met already did all your paperwork. You're dismissed." And I was just like, eh. I shrugged and I walked out of the courtroom as quickly as I could. Right, so you had the good version yes, of a kangaroo that it, court. Yes, There's also yes. a bad version of Which a kangaroo court. Which I suspect happened like, to Joan. You're already doing Yeah, okay, from yeah, the yeah, yeah. It, goes bo- it can yeah. go both ways. I, I forgot to mention yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of nuances to this trial, but basically illiterate Joan of Arc held her own against the learned Pierre and the other bishops. Now, um, because she had already tried to escape, And she already broken the rules of chivalry. They kept her chained to her bed while she was not in court. Okay. Well, no sleepwalking. No good. Yeah. Don't want to jump out of the dungeon window. Yeah. Yeah, That probably hurt. (laughs) Rip her ankle off. Dungeon window. (laughs) Yep. Surprisingly, Joan was not raped during her capture. And I I mentioned this a few times that Joan was obsessed with the fact that she was a virgin. It was very important to her. God did wants to fuck you when that's you like die. a fifth miracle he doesn't want itself you to die mm. well yeah i mean you'd think if this person's like denied all rights and these are like stupid horny right, middle right? aged men they're rough gonna, times yeah, yeah rough times you know surprisingly she was not raped um but there was a the whole fact that she was a virgin was kind of questionable because and this wasn't even from an english source like slandering her um, she may have been a working girl in an inn before her adventure. Her adventure began. Of course. <laughs> well, I mean, no easier way to change your identity and who you are, yeah. than just claiming the opposite. Yeah. yeah. And she also was in, actually set to marry a man at one point, and she. I, I kind of forgot this point, but she was set to marry a man, and then she was like, "Nah, I gotta go do God stuff." Bye. Cool. I'm sure he was thrilled. Yeah, classic woman. Yeah. <laughs> he said that. Mike uh-huh. said that. That came out of his face hole. Yes. So at one point during the trial, this guy, Pierre, who was presiding over everything, excommunicated her. Um, and excommunicated, we know that usually it's like you're exiled from the church. But specifically, it's it means that you're not allowed to receive communion. Yeah, that's no soup for you. Yeah, no bread for you. Excommunicated. Yeah. And this was because she refused to wear a dress. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'm going to take Joan's side on this. Yeah. I don't care how crazy you are. 
You can uh, wear whatever you want on your uh, pants. Oh, yeah. Pierre is just as fucking nuts as Joan was. I had a feeling. I, yeah. I feel like this is a story of no good guys. I You have not said any one character that I'm like, oh, I could get into them. I could really no. relate because I'm no, a good guy. Is, yeah, everyone's this dumb. Is a everyone's really idiots. stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. So Pierre excommunicates her, and the whole point of dressing up as a man was a big contested point in this fake trial um joan said that told the court that the voices the saints told her to dress up as a male and if she did not dress up as a male she would be di- disobeying a direct order from god a n- god dress up like a, a dude no-no, bro if you will yeah. put, that god. Fox, fuck the, put that fox team racing hat on dog on tuck yeah that's facts hmm. yeah yeah, God doesn't understand. He's kind of autistic, so he's just like, are you men? Are you women? God's autistic? He wants to know. I was made in his God's image? God's autistic. You were. <laughs> yes, Cody, you're the most godly on the show. <laughs> so, of course, the Catholic Church are going to spin this whole dressing up like a dude as a blasphemous thing. Even though one of the saints that apparently visited Joan, St. Margaret, had dressed up like a man... And became oh. a saint. And this was, had still, this was, bef- she became a saint before Joan of Arc. What? So, right. Double standard, man. Right Cross- yeah, it's a little bit of a double standard. The court slammed her with an idol tree. What, what is that? Uh, I- adultery? Being a a, an idol, idol? idol okay. worship. Uh, yeah, so. What does that mean, like a fake cult leader? Well, one of the big sins in the Bible is worshiping a fake. Thou not worship fake, a false, a false idol. idol. You don't yeah. want to do that. Ooh. So they said by dressing up like a man, she was an idol to herself. Well, there's some weird what? logic. I'll get behind it. Why not? It already happened. <laughs> yeah. You're a narcissist. Yeah. She was also branded a heretic, apostate, a relapse, and as I mentioned, an Ooh. idler. You're a fucking All relapse of those sound guy. dirty. Uh, like that. Yeah, that's fun. Relapse? I'm going to start calling people a relapse. I'm going to start relapse. calling people a prolapse. Oh, Professional uh, lapse. What is a prolapse, man? A oh, professional yeah, lapser. Yeah, you got yeah. it, Mike. Yeah, professional lapser. Michael yeah. Phelps is a pro lapser. <laughs> pro lapser. <laughs> uh, so she was forced to wear a dunce cap. A typical, like, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> that said all those words on it. Idiot. What words did it say? It says, uh, her- oh, wait, all the ones you just mentioned. Oh, yeah, cool. Pro-lapse. That's fun. That's cool. That's, all the, all the, that's good. All that's, the mean words. All the mean words. She's a sad clown. Uh, then her head was shaved, and she was forced to wear a women's dress, and she was marched through the streets while people threw stones at her. Jeez. Oh, man. No love for Joni. This is, there's the movie. Yeah. Which everyone has seen at least a still of. It's from, like, the 1920s, and it looks so good. Oh, yeah, it's oh that one. Really good okay. one. Yeah, it's, yeah, there's a Joan of Arc film, if you don't know about it, it's from the 20s, silent film. The actress in it, I forget her name, she's phenomenal. It's like, you, you, you just... She does the whole thing with her eyes. But again, she has a blonde hair. Like, you know what I mean? No, That's she's the... sha- she has a shaved it's shaved. Head. Yeah, it's shaved. It's I-, I thought it was like brownish, but it doesn't matter. She yeah. she she knocks out of the park. Yeah. It's a really good film, especially for that time. It like, is, really good. It, it, it is like considered Nosferatu. one of the best films ever made. Yeah. And in all seriousness, I like The Matrix better. Okay. But <laughs> I, I would say, if you're curious, check it out. Cars 2, I think, is one of my favorites. Oh, no. Love Pixar, you're everything they've sick done. Sick fuck. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> My fucking tit itches. <laughs> so she was forced to sign this document stating that she was a filthy sinner. Basically, the the trial had moved from public to private. So they brought Uh-oh. her. They were basically uh, sentencing or doing these trials in her cell while she was chained to the bed. She was possibly poisoned. She had like they said food poisoning, right. uh, <laughs> mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms. So once they were behind out of the public's eye they could basically make her confess anything apparently didn't torture her but they could do other things i mean listening to a catholic talk to you yeah is torture yeah. Yeah. Can I we've all been to mass board, please instead of this right yeah. it's not fun so in the end she was sentenced to burn at the stake not good yeah uh they did that shit too <laughs> <laughs> it's like he doesn't know history yeah. I don't know. I, I, I didn't know. I thought Joan Arc was like a, she died in battle or something. No, shit. no, she di- She she became uh, extra crispy. Kebab. Damn. Yeah. They got her good, man. It's very upsurd. It really Thanks is religion. So, so now, 
So now here, how is she a bad person though, Travis? Where are we going she's with She's a this? liar, a, a thief, good guesser, a charlatan. Look, I mean, it's tragic. It's a tragic story that this woman, the delusional woman, she was talking to God. She talking to like God. she needed someone to just take care of her at home. That's yeah. what. That's how this should have panned out. I, Joan of Arc should have just been of a woman who grew a vegetable garden and hung out. The and, reason why I picked her was just because I. Before I did the research, like I didn't know that she was like talking to God and like all of this fucking the 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 miracles. Wait, wait, she, like two people die. Right? Didn't everyone talk to God back then? Though? I mentioned Somewhat. that at the top. I mentioned that at the top. Right. It's, tr- it's true. And like you know, getting all raised Catholic and doing my covert uh, reconnaissance <laughs> upbringing. Oh no! Right. Um, I every time a, a saint was mentioned, they was always the. They spoke with God. Yeah. Even the more conservative ones, like St. Thomas More. Yeah. He was chilling. He was Even just the like, mute ones. You don't hear voices in your head? Nah, they shouldn't have done that. You know, that's basically what he did. Right. I mean, I think some of the more dickbaggery things was beheading a dude that was like supposed to be like a POW. Yeah, that was and bad. Like, you also, know. not telling the other two. Yeah, to move telling over. the other two knights to move. They, maybe they were dickheads. Guessing the wind. <laughs> Guessing wind. I mean, I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's know? not bad. It's just dumb. <laughs> we weren't there. We don't know the full story. We weren't there. That's so, why we have biographies okay, so she... in this goddamn show, Mike. <laughs> biographies? Yeah. What did they write down back then? Everything you've heard she tonight. Con- yeah, she had a confessor. <laughs> that was all made up later on. No, this was her telling a confessor. All this stuff, like, because before that you got killed, there was, like, a guy that came around and was like, what you want to say? It's not like... Not like a confession, but like a biographer. Yeah. Right. Oh, Literally, he's just like they make you admit to all any the last shit words, did, right? and you can right. say as many words as you want. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a Catholic confession. It's just some guy that's gonna uh, take your fucking story down. Imagine that being that guy, like you know, someone stapled to a bed for the next like you know three days while they're waiting to get burned, and and you're like, all right, we got a talker. Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna need some value. Value menu yeah. nuggets because she will not put shut a, up, and I am scribing hard. Two pots of very, on. yep. Right. Actually, it probably wasn't depressing back then because they probably lived for that shit. They do. There's something like he's th- Dude, whoever was yeah, writing it's a, it down. It's, it's, like, it's a paparazzi oh, for the camera, Mike. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so here's an important thing because remember you can't be a saint if you're excommunicated. Right. So this guy Pierre Cochon was like before she was going to go up to the stake. He allowed her to receive communion. Uh oh. Mm. So he had already excommunicated her, and then he was like, oh, "I feel bad for you. Here's some uh, some red water and uh, bread. Here you go, bitch. It's called <laughs> stuffing. Yeah. We'll ca- we'll see how you're doing in eight hours. So Ooh. so that's gonna be important. Um, but ask me the question. Ooh, Travis, how, how's oh, Mike? Go ahead. Oh no, you go. All you right, go fine. It, Fuck you, Mike. Travis, how does the lovely Joan of Arc meet her maker? So as I mentioned, she was burnt to the stake. But at the age of 19, she was led up to the stake, bound to it, and the executioner lit the pyre at her feet. Now, the executioner was instructed to keep the flames further away from her, so her death was extremely slow and painful. Cool. She apparently cried out, Jesus, uh, six times before succumbing to the flames. Now, right, this is this is really sick. Uh, right before, right when she was extra crispy, so like she was charred, right. black, like just like gross. The executioner pulled the stake off of the flame and showed her naked, crispy body to the crowd to prove that she was not a man. Wow. Okay. Defilement. Wow. I mean, post mortem. She was a bad person. Like you're getting hung up. I'm not on saying this. she's tragic. I'm not saying this is tragic. I'm saying, Mike, Look, you got she... a roaster. I'm not saying she's a hero, but you know. Look, it's a story of sick people. Yeah. It's not just her we're talking about, Mike. It's also, a story of mis- miscommunication. She's no Cary Grant, but she's like, you know, <laughs> she's all right. Yeah. It seems like she was, uh, she had good ideas. She, she was out of her mind. She was pickled in the brain. Yeah. And her, her saint, her, her, her I could have changed her. My, uh, yeah, Mike. That, that, I like D, that. With that D. No, no. Uh, it's called friendship, Travis. Friendship? Come on. Friendship. 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 Friends have friendship. So this was a real fuck you for her because she was a uh, chaste woman and they were showing the crowd off. She didn't get banged, Mike. Like, yeah, that, that body doesn't have a dick, so it must be a woman. Then she was returned to the pyre and her body was burnt into ashes, apparently, 
According to the legend, her heart was the last thing to burn, which I don't believe. Cause That's pretty cool. Just a, I feel like your bones and teeth. That was a badass way to go out, though. The burned out a stake. That's a terrible It's way painful, to go out. but like, <laughs> it sucks at the time, but it's a cool legacy. But like, I was fucking burned. Would you stake. like to say that when you're in heaven, Mike? I guess so. I'm already dead. I'm like, that was pretty sick. <laughs> Rather than like dive jerking off too many times. I'd go that way. That light. way seems nice. <laughs> It's not <laughs> that way. Seems like you're going to Valhalla, yeah, dude. That's, that's a terrible Valhalla. way to go out. Your parents no. just find you, just humped over your. Why my desk parents gotta find me? How about tab? you find me, Mike? <laughs> Pension my No, that's, that's like, even worse. Mike, like, that that's like that guy. Have you seen the dude in Pompeii? That um, yeah, you know, everyone's frozen, frozen where they were with the ash oh, and everything. Yeah, and there's yeah, a guy yeah. fucking it. beating his like, meat. He did that on purpose. Dude, I would. You, I you gotta you like would. make your like grip like the size of a Last grapefruit, moment, so people think you've yeah. got like an elephant trunk in your pants. Fuck it, just hold it. I don't, <laughs> and they all think you have a giant spherical penis. It's you know, it's it's what you do. Perception, right? So I do have a little bit of postmortem because we ended it here. It's like, well, Joan's not a saint. She's not. Uh, she's she's excommunicated, burned to the stake. Everyone hates her. I, I, I love Joan of Arc. I, I love hate her. her. I hate this woman. Love she's so her. annoying. <laughs> Saint Joan. <laughs> so Charles Joans. VII somehow, even though he was eating himself to death, won the war. I think the British just kind of were like, eh, we're good. We're tired. Yeah. I'd be tired it's, too. It's been 116 years. That's a long years. Time. We got to end this shit. Why are we fighting anymore? <laughs> it's a classic Montague and uh, Capulet. Oh story. my God, the deep cuts. Yeah, I never even met my great grandparents. So. All right, that's a like long ass time to fucking. Yeah, so yeah. Charles, even though he didn't give a shit when she was trying to get ransom, ransomed off, <laughs> he held an av- investigation into Joan's trial. And basically, as I mentioned, the fact that the lead investigator, this guy Pierre, um, had given her communion after he had excommunicated her proved that the whole trial was a shit. Yeah, that's counterintuitive. You can't excommunicate someone and be like, here's some wine, dog. Yeah, I mean, Fatty's got a point. <laughs> yeah. So what are they going to do now, though? She's already dead. Well, posthumous- posthumously, she was exonerated by the church and let back into the church so she could die in heaven. Oh, uh, my God. Shit. Now, flash forward to the 20th century. She had remained like a legend, right? Like every There was a bunch during the 19th century and the 18th century. Like Joan of Arc was kind of in the ethos. In French culture, did they did they tell like a gotcha story for a while? Like there was a great person who battled against English and battled against dumb dumb yeah. French, made it, it back. Was like a f- and everyone's just like, oh, that sounds cool. What if I told you that person was a woman? Yes, what's it was like a French science oh. episode. Yeah, right. Yeah. She was sick. She was sick with the fucking flag, yo. She fucking knew how to wave that shit. Hashtag stop French yeah, hate. Mike. Exactly. <laughs> took, she took an arrow to the tit. Out of the knee. No, yeah. to the tit. <laughs> hey, I got tits, too. Everyone's got tits. Yeah. So she kind of was like this legend in France. Um, but officially in the 20th century, Joan was canonized as a saint by the Roman Catholic Church on May 16th, 1920. Isn't it May 16th? May 16th. It's the is, it, it is um, May 16th. It's the 15th. Oh, oh, oh conspiracy. Oh. 101 years later. Wow, that's yeah. Crazy. That is weird. I got to go home now. So, uh, yeah, now we're dating ourselves. Everyone yeah, thanks, like Mike. Y'all just cre- I'm young forever. Tits. You guys are old. I'm young forever. Forever young. Exactly. So, Joan officially became one of 10 saints of France. <laughs> oh. <laughs> France has 10 saints. That are there it's like you s- is that a lot yeah, yeah uh yeah that's a lot it's i think they have the most amount of saints it, per country because like no United the italians states- do the italians oh, true. Yeah. they made a job everyone over there knows a saint apparently the united states has two saints one of them is catherine of siena and just immaculate conception is that's a saint what? that's apparently a saint what is that a joseph <laughs> smith thing i don't know immaculate consumption that's, that's a person it's just a mystery dick. This is a mystery person. Yeah. It's actually Abraham Lincoln. What were you going to say, Cody? I can't remember after Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> I just fried it. So uh, as well of just joining the gang of 10 saints of France, she was also the saint of martyrs, captives, military personnel, people ridiculed for their piety, prisoners, soldiers, Women who serve in waves, which is women accepted for volunteer emergency service, 
And wow. the women's army. So everyone board. but white men. Okay, fine. <laughs> be that way. Oh, well, you could be a white Margaret. Right. Yeah, she's... Look at David Duke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well, well, you know what? That was fun. I like Joan. My mom's a fan of her. I can't wait for her to listen oh, to this good. episode. She probably, you know, every time she listens to this show, she actually likes it, but she li- she likes me less. Oh, okay. Same I'm here. a fan of Joan. Uh, Mike. Travis sexist. Tom sexist. Cody sexist. Mike not sexist. Look, I don't think that Joan was a, a bad person. I was just confused. Laura, I was, I, I never Isn't saw the amount Rose of Mortem? craziness involved with this woman. It's always shown as this sword wielding like i said the that's what i thought too. i thought she was right? badass you know? like, mike what's your way. pickup yeah, line mike, for i mean hey joan i like the way you hold a flag i think we should you should teach me how to hold that flag wow that's strong <laughs> i'm sold already yeah. I'm, I'm wet well that's amazing you know mike we've explained the show <laughs> to you several times I'm still confused though. But we bring in people that we don't up, necessarily though. hate. We don't have to shit on every person. Like for example, you did ODB, and we like he's him. He's a great person. Yeah, you guys forced. He's not a great person. <laughs> great we like him. That. There's a difference. There's a huge difference. I liked you him like more him more after doing the research. It's like this guy is pretty cool. It always happens that way. <laughs> Same thing with Hank Williams. Same thing with Cary Grant. Well, cool Cary people. Grant, I knew he was going <laughs> to steal my heart. <laughs> that was that was the most <laughs> empty handed research i had done for the show because i got nothing on the guy but joan of arc just trying to say joan of arc she's in that like gray area of like That's obviously being... not the worst person needed some mental yeah. health they didn't have enough hashtags to save her at the time <laughs> i think she's a saint okay right, well that's right. that well, she's a mike... well she is in fact a saint I so think... you're not wrong i think mike just zoned out when i said nice titties yeah Maybe. to mike yeah. this episode yeah. was well, I she can't long. have nice titties if she's malnourished nourished You've seen skinny bitches with big tits. It looks weird. That sounds sexist, but oh, yeah, sexist. Oh, real nice, oh. Saint Michael. The yeah, Saint Michael over <laughs> here. I got weird tits to... too. It's not my fault. <laughs> all right, he just knocked on wood. I think that's our cue to get right, out can, of here. He cut all. His, can you cut me out Never. of this episode? So I'm gonna get fucking yeah, canceled. Yeah, so we cut Mike out of the entire episode, or right, just yeah. the rest of it. Um, hey, thanks Woo! for listening to the show, everyone. Thanks for listening, Travis. Thanks for doing the research. Uh, we love all you. patreoncom slash cast. Do all the social medias, yada yada yada. My name's Tom Shane. Dick is Shane. <laughs> Dick is Shane. My name is Mike. Thank you. And I approve this message. I'm a fan of uh, you guys. You guys are my uh, inspiration. I'm a fan of you, Mike. Oh, uh, well, thank you. Big fan of you. What's the Miser- Le Misera song? You should sing. Le Misera? Um, oh, that's a play, right? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I always see those t shirts. <laughs> okay, um, Mike. What's a Mary Pop? No, Mary Poppins is a Ma- Ma- Little Miserables. How is that like orphan? There's always like an orphan girl on the cover. Of, like... Orphan girl, yeah. Which is, uh, I thought it was funny. I thought that Le Miserable was just like, yeah, that looks like the looks sad. the miserable sad girl. It does mean the miserable. Yeah, oh. yeah. I thought that was funny. So I thought it was a comedy the whole time. Yeah, I thought it was very sad. All right, I'm gonna sing a song. Hey, hey mama, see the way you move, gonna make you sway, gonna make you groove. Hey, mama, see the way you sway, I'm French, I suck my balls. That's Bye. it. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, it's not sexist. All righty. So, we just talked about how she's going to go to Paris. Ooh, right. Gay. gay. Very gay. And how Charles was like, I don't want you to raise the army. Um, like, motherfucker, I'm making us win, you dumb fuck. Yeah. Take that microphone. Like, the, the thing isn't even pointing in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps, like, mo- it keeps moving. I don't know how. <laughs> Just move it back. All the- you see how I do this? Yeah. I'm t- I, I, need, I need like a little thing. I need like a headset. Like- all right, Pretend we're gonna get your laugh mic. All right. Pretend you're Marth- Mar- 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 Marsha Mathers. Can I bring my headset here? Like I have, I have like a gaming headset. I, I'm gonna that. make. I'm going to make a sombrero with the little dangles <laughs> around it, and it's gonna be all laugh mic. So you can I turn wish. your head whichever way you'd like, <laughs> and it will pick you up. That'd be very nice.